three minutes. Mr. Chairman, we stood on this floor about a year ago when the minority was the majority, and the language they want to change now is the language they approved. In fact, the chairman of the Armed Services Committee at that time, Mr. Skelton, said this. He said, we are in a position to accept this motion. I just wish to point out that there is no difference between the Democrats and Republicans when it comes to fighting terrorism. I agree with the motion. But, oh, Mr. Chairman, what a difference a year makes because there's not just some difference. There's a huge gap now between the Democrats and the Republicans on fighting terrorism. And I've never heard so many red herrings. The red herrings of all these people that have been tried here, very few of them were detained under the authorization to use military force. Most of them were uh, arrested and detained based upon law enforcement. A huge difference. They raised the questions, can we hold them here? Sure. They asked, can we get a conviction? Possibly. But the real question is, why would we want to bring them here to try them? There's no prosecutor who knows what he's talking about, no investigator who's going to walk in here today and tell you that it's easier to convict one of these detainees by bringing them to the United States and trying them in an Article III court than it is to do it in a military tribunal. And the reason is, they ask, who wants it? I'll tell you who really wants it the ACLU. Why do they want it? Because they don't want convictions. They've already said they want all the detainees released. And they know the moment they hit U.S. soil, they will pick up a host of constitutional rights they don't, know, they don't now have. They know it'll be a harder to get convictions. And they also know this, that one of the trials that took place on the AMF, the defendant was acquitted of over 200 different counts. When, Mr. Chairman, is someone going to stand up for the rights of the victims of terror here who ask this question, when are we going to start getting prosecutions? My good friend from New Jersey talked about the fact, oh, we want to let our prosecutors make these decisions. We want to let them go forward unfettered. What he didn't point out to you was that was happening. The prosecutors, a special prosecutor working under the current law at that time had worked for over 18 months, over 56 motions. That prosecutor would have told you he would have had guilty pleas in six months, and this administration not only stopped him, not only took away his rights, but did away with the entire investigation, started from zero, and they've been two and a half years and haven't prosecuted. Mr. Chairman, the question for us today is very, very simple. We've got military tribunals. Nobody's truly questioning the constitutionality of those military tribunals. The question for us is, when are we going to prosecute them? And the other question is, let's keep the terrorists out of the United States, and let's vote against this amendment. And, Mr. Chairman, with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired.